In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Holy Paladin in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is gonna be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, as with most classes, human is going to be the best option if you're playing Alliance. The double healing trinket is simply just way too good to pass up. This is because of Will to Survive, which allows you to break out of any crowd control on a two minute cooldown. Now, as a result, you can equip two healing trinkets instead of one. This can help us get more spirit and optimize our gearing strategy. Now on the Horde side, you have two options. The first option is gonna be Blood Elf. Blood Elf provides the Arcane Torrent ability, which not only can be used to silence an enemy, but also provides a small amount of mana back. This can be useful when playing aggressively as you use Hammer of Justice into a Blood Elf Silence to potentially win the game. Alternatively, you can go Torin. There are two benefits of going Torin, and the first is War Stomp. This provides you with an additional stun that you can use in between your Hammer of Justice cooldown. You also gain just a bit more health, which is great when you are the kill target. While Horde is a solid option, most Paladins are going to find themselves on the Alliance playing human as this helps to optimize our gearing strategy. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. There is only one build that you're going to be playing, but there are going to be some minor adjustments that you can make. Cataclysm has shaken up some familiar talents. You might recognize Divine Favor, but it does work a little bit differently. Divine Favor works similarly to Avenging Wrath, wherein it'll increase your spell haste and critical strike chance by 20% for 20 seconds. In fact, you can pair this with Avenging Wrath to pump out some massive heals. Tower of Radiance is a new talent that synergizes with our new holy power spender, Word of Glory. This ensures when you heal your beacon target with Flash of Light, it's gonna generate holy power. Now this in turn allows us to cast Word of Glory as one of our highest single target heals. Enlightened Judgment is another crucial talent as it converts a percentage of our spirit into hit. This means we don't need to gear for hit as we'll naturally acquire it through proper stat optimization. The current talent build is a bit more offensive and can be good when playing with a comp that allows you to play aggressively, such as double caster or in 2v2 when playing with a melee. And comps where you may need to just sit back and heal, you can drop the two points in Denounce to pick up two additional points in Conviction. Additionally, you would drop two points in Blazing Light for two points in Clarity of Purpose. Now, along with talents, the glyph system has changed a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're gonna have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone and it's the same for all builds, but there is one small adjustment you can make in the major glyphs, which we're gonna cover a bit later. Glyph of Holy Shock increases the critical strike chance of this ability, and this is crucial as it gives us more infusion of light procs. Glyph of Seal of Insight provides a 5% healing buff when Seal of Insight is active. Glyph of Word of Glory simply provides a flat healing increase to this ability. Your build is going to have the same three major glyphs. Cleansing, Turn Evil, and Hammer of Justice. Glyph of Cleansing reduces the mana cost of your dispel. 
Glyph of Turn Evil is amazing into Warlocks and Death Knights as it makes Turn Evil instant cast. Glyph of Hammer of Justice extends the range by 5 yards, and this can be useful when enemies are kiting away or make it safer to land CC. You can consider dropping Hammer of Justice for Glyph of Divine Plea if you're struggling with mana. This provides 6% more mana back over the duration of this ability. And finally, our Minor Glyphs are fairly important as they reduce the mana cost of our Blessings and Seals, which you might need to change or rebuff mid-game. This can be the difference between going out of mana and having the sliver of mana you need to win the game. By default, we're going with Glyph of Justice, Blessing of Kings, and Insight. You can adjust this based on your teammates' buffs. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Turn Evil. This is undoubtedly the most undervalued ability in our entire toolkit, and here is how you can use it. The most obvious of which, and something we hope you're all doing, is using it to counter an Unholy Death Knight's Gargoyle. This is pretty straightforward. Track Gargoyle, make a weak aura, <laughs> get some air horns, whatever you need. The second it's used, hit it with Turn Evil, then hit it again, and again. Yes, Turn Evil has a diminishing return, but the amount of damage you reduce by doing this, <laughs> it's honestly wild. Staying with DKs, our next use of Turn Evil is for a Death Knight's pet, but not just the standard ghoul, this guy. This is Dark Transformation, an ability Death Knights are able to use whenever they build up five stacks of Shadow Infusion, which they get from using Death Coil. This not only makes their pet ugly as hell, but on top of that, increases the damage it deals by 60%. And better yet, while empowered, the Death Knight is also able to use both Monstrous Blow and Shambling Rush, which gives them access to an additional stun and an additional interrupt. So. If the pet's big and you need to cast, make sure you turn evil at first. If turn evil wasn't strong enough though against death knights already, it can also be used to counter one of their major defensives, Lichborn. This, when used, turns the death knight undead, which enables them to death coil themselves for a ridiculous amount of healing. Well, unless they're feared by turn evil anyway. Again, add Lichborn to your weak aura, Omnibar, whatever you may need, then hit Turn Evil whenever you see Lichborn used. Last but definitely not least, the final use of Turn Evil is against Warlocks, or, um, well, technically their pet. In Cataclysm, a Warlock spell lock comes from their pet, Fell Hunter. If you need to cast, but they have it available, you guessed it, fear the pet. Do note though that this isn't the most reliable if you're going on the Warlock themselves, as it has the potential of breaking from the Soul Link damage. Oh, and for a bonus tip here, if you're ever within 10 yards of a Warlock's pet, a Death Knight with Lichborn active, his Empowered pet, or even a Gargoyle. In addition to turn evil, you can also look to stun these with Holy Wrath for some added lockdown. Definitely more niche, but still very useful. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You first want as much intellect as possible. You'll naturally acquire this through your gear. After that, you'll want around 1500 spirit. Spirit is tied to our mana regeneration, and it's going to help prevent us from going out of mana. After that, you'll want at least 3,000 Resilience, although if you are really confident you won't be the kill target, you can play as low as 2,000 Resilience on Paladin. You'll then want Critical Strike. If you're finding yourself staying relatively high mana, you can even drop some Spirit for some more Critical Strike. After that is Haste and then Mastery. Spell Penetration and Hit are effectively useless and should absolutely never be pursued. You'll be over hit cap because of enlightened judgments, and holy resistance just doesn't exist, so spell penetration would literally have no effect. Now, before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre biz gear using the link in the description below. Now, though, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. 
In Season 9, all of your best in-slot gear is going to come from PvP, with the exception of trinkets. However, if you're playing a comp where you won't be the kill target, then you can drop a significant portion of your PvP gear in favor of PvE with Critical Strike and Spirit. Your main pieces are going to be the Vicious Gladiator's Redemption set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's ornamented head cover, spalders, chest guard, gloves, and leg plates. Now, we are running 5 set just due to the set's stats being optimized for our breakpoints. Do make sure that you carefully check the piece to ensure that it says ornamented, as the standard Gladiator's Redemption set has strength, not intellect. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Meditation. Your bracers are going to be Vicious Gladiator's Bracers of Meditation. You'll then use Vicious Gladiator's Clasp of Meditation in the waist slot. And finally, to round out our off pieces, you're going to have Vicious Gladiator's Greaves of Meditation in the boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Gavel in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Barrier in your off hand. The Relic slot's going to be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Dominance. For your jewelry, you're going to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Meditation. For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Dominance and Accuracy. And this is where a majority of our hit is going to come from. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity if you're Horde, and you'll then use Tear of Blood and Fall of Mortality. Tear of Blood is a blue dungeon trinket, but it procs a massive spirit bonus off critical heals, which Paladin specializes in. This is much better than Tsunami, as we're not spam casting. When it comes to reforging, you won't need to do much. The goal is to stick to your stats. You can reforge for more spirit, although you can reforge spirit to critical for bigger heals if you're struggling on healing and not mana. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it is going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the auction house where you're going to be picking up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra stats from Peerless Stats is going to be beneficial. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your bracers, Mastery for your gloves, and Lava Walker for your boots. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak will be enchanted with the Dark Glow Embroidery. This is going to allow you to proc extra mana. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful ghostly spell thread, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and Superior Intellect on your off hand. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gem slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gemmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in a Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some intellect and increase the effect of your critical heals. In your red slots, you have a couple of options, but your default should be the Brilliant Inferno Ruby. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more healing output, or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you need to be using Purified Demon's Eye. This gives us spirit for our mana, along with a little bit of intellect. And then in yellow sockets, put Potent Ember Topaz. This is going to give us a bit more critical strike and intellect. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices. You want to go Tailoring and Jewel Crafting. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Dark Glow Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spirit bonus, which can help you avoid going out of mana in particularly long matchups. Jewel Crafting is our second pick. This allows us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. Now, by default, you're going to use the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes for more healing but you can use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience. This should only be used in situations where you're struggling to survive, although as a Holy Paladin, you likely won't be the target outside of Melee Cleaves in 2v2. You do have the option of going Blacksmithing as an alternative. It is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it is going to be more stats in later seasons where we have access to Epic Gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro. First up, you're going to want Focus Macros for Hammer of Justice, Rebuke, and Judgment. These are your main forms of utility, so you want to be able to reliably and quickly respond to any situations. 
If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 123 macros for Hammer of Justice, Rebuke, and Judgment. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. You can also make a 3-in-1 Judgment macro. This will either use Judgment on your target, but if you're targeting a friendly target, then it'll cast at your target's target. Even better, if you have no target at all, it's going to cast Judgment at your focus. Now, as a Paladin, a lot of your buffs can be stolen by mages. It is a good idea to have a Cancel Aura macro that you can use to prevent a mage from stealing those key abilities, such as Avenging Wrath and Divine Plea. And finally, it's a good idea to have a Turn Evil macro. This is going to be useful when fighting against Death Knights and Warlocks as it's going to fear the nearest pet. You can also use a Mouse Over macro that only requires you to put your cursor over the pet you want to fear. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.